survivor of abuse, a war veteran. You must be suffering from post-traumatic stress disorder. We have the solution to your problem, Phenoxyl. It isolates and removes your torment, be it an old traumatic event or a bad memory. Say goodbye to restless nights and constant churning over it. Forget about it forever. It's finally possible with Phenoxyl. Monsters. Fucking monsters. You can't erase memories forever. It would be like erasing time itself. Memories and time go hand in hand. The consequences would be even more devastating than Alzheimer's disease. There would be no separation between pre- and post-trauma. The memories would wander autonomously in search for answers. For a common ground. Fractured by spells of amnesia, hallucinations, and emotional swings, two opposing perceptions would coexist, overlapping and threatening one another. To the detriment of the one truth, now shattered, the so-called porcelain memory. I won't open my mouth! I'll keep everything to myself! And are you really suggesting that all this time, these people kept these experiments synthesizing this parasite, the moths, that were carried out on the nuns at the plantation a secret, making them intentionally ill as if they were lab rats? Just for this drug? The phenoxyl, the farm, the moths, the hypnosis, and all those deep and dark family secrets. Family secrets are very dangerous. The most dangerous of any kind. The only way to survive was burying them so far down inside ourselves. And to move on. Richard Felton, Ariana Gallo, Professor Wyman, the Ashman sons, Stefano and Gloria Ashman. They all made a choice. And so did I. So you chose to forget. For 49 years, I left a part of me behind at that time. I did everything they asked of me. Forget. But one day, that missing puzzle piece resurfaced, like dirt stuck beneath your fingernails. It is there and always has been. Sometimes it is a song, a lullaby, or a certain item. But for me, that missing puzzle piece was a special person. A lonely one, just like me.
Mr. Ashman. Andrea! The girl is here. Shall I let her in? Go on. Sit down. You know why you're here, young lady, don't you? I am willing to turn a blind eye to the money and the cigarettes. Don't be fooled into thinking that I don't know about them. But for everything else, I refuse to do so. This is not a tourist resort, nor a playground. Breaking an entry? Larceny! What plans did you have for that gun? For God's sake, Jennifer, tell me! I don't know anymore. It seems you are a magnet for trouble. From what I'm reading, you caused a lot of hassle, especially at the Flemington Girls Institute. Other girls similar to you ended up straight in juvie. Did you know that? All I can do is apologize. I can assure you I never intended... Young lady, what are you running away from? You are safe here. You can talk to me about it. I'm serious! <sighs> Very well. We will have to talk about this again. Considering what has happened, I have made arrangements to give you new chores. You will help Eliza in the kitchen. But, sir! You will do your best. I've always done my best here! I seriously doubt that. When you become of age, you will do as you wish and as you see fit. But until then, you are under my care and you will do as I say. Run along now. Oh, and by the way, Lindsay will no longer be a problem for you. What do you mean? She insisted that I send you elsewhere. Instead, I have organized to have her transferred to another facility. They will be coming to collect her next week. You may leave. The bathroom in room number 212 has to be cleaned. Oh, and don't forget that you'll be helping Elisa in the kitchen after lunch. Okay. 
You've really done it this time. Make sure that the two of you don't get him agitated. After his parents' death, Mr. Ashman Jr. did everything by himself here. What happened to them? Dead, my dear. Like all those who grow old. And I'm sure the mourning sped up the process. Mourning? For the nearby convent. Have you seriously not heard of it? The convent just went up in flames one day. Even this building was partly damaged. A dozen nuns died in that fire. Mr. Ashman's sister, Gloria, being one of them. That's terrible. They had contracted some sort of disease. They practically went blind. They had gone mad. And that doctor, Wyman? Sure as hell didn't help them. Poor girl. She was locked up in there by her own parents. Why? Hi, Jen. Oh, Andrea. I'll start with room 213. Did Mr. Ashman have something to do with it? Shh! Lower your voice! You'll get us thrown out of here. It seems that Mr. Ashman had the bad habit of touching his little sister. Oh, God! Obviously, the parents didn't like this at all. So they sent him to a family relative in the North and his sister Gloria to the convent. If it were me, I would have done the opposite. For him, the arrangement only lasted a few months. For her instead? Well, that's another story entirely. He had always been mommy and daddy, sweetheart. of knocking <laughs> no way but it's so last year everything okay with ashman of course fantastic never better everything is great he got angry didn't he why would you care lynn tell me i was just asking asking what it's none of your business what are you talking about you can't be upset with me forever. I'm trying not to be, but my arm keeps reminding me. I didn't mean to. It was only... an accident. Do you have any idea how guilty I feel? Jen, please. I feel so shit about it. I didn't want it to get to this point. I already know it all. Ashman told me everything. What are you talking about? You suggested to him that I be transferred elsewhere. Is that what you wanted? You're really a bitch sometimes. A bitch who let herself be fooled. 